Hey, Domino. He's a little dirty right now. He's been laying in grass and stuff. Here, come on over here, Domino. Uh, yeah, come on, come on. You gotta face the camera. Hey, my name is Chris Jube. I'm the glamping guy, and I'm here to talk about pet rules. Not uh, providing an opportunity for people to bring pets is really leaving a lot of money on the table. The first pet rule is to let us know that you're coming with a pet. A lot of OTAs actually operate this way so that they actually can can tell you that they have a pet coming. I do charge $30 for a, for a pet. It's one of my standard upgrades. People who have pets tend to understand that that's what they're going to pay. Another rule is to always have them leashed. I do allow them to be unleashed when they're either in their tent or on their deck, but I say off your deck, you do need to have them leashed. So keeping them leashed is another rule. I also say pets are not allowed to be on the bed. If we find dog hair on the bed, I will complain and sometimes even charge them if it's really egregious. Having it extra cleaned isn't that big of a deal. Uh, it, it's like I said, people people search for venues, especially outdoor venues, uh, to to spend time with pets. So uh, so I would say um, I'd say it's worth the extra expense if, even if they do get in the bed. And now this one's really important: is to never leave your dog alone. Dogs act differently when you're gone, <laughs> and that's just the, the nature of dogs. Yeah, you 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 act perfectly, don't you, Domino? Dog, yeah. I've walked in before with Domino and and him uh, up on the couch and things like that. They do act differently. Hey, Domino, come on, back back over here. They do act differently when you're you're not around uh, uh, barking orders at them. Another another one is not really a rule but a warning is that I say prepare for your dog to be wet. We have a creek, so the dogs like to get in the creek. They get wet. They walk into the tent. They get they have mud all over the place. I suggest maybe you bring a kennel uh, or some extra towels. That's more of a request for them. You know, go ahead and bring that so that they can uh, better take care of their pets. I also give them the warning that other glampers may be having pets too. So I say if everyone gets along fine, then everything's gonna be fine with. Their pets and I also in my welcome book I give them a heads up of the pets that I have like I introduce them to Domino I say Domino might come by and say hi and he thinks he owns the place but we also have cats in the in the yard uh, if you've ever stayed at Monument Glamping there's really never any mice why is that well I've got quite a few cats they're barn cats they run around the property and 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 um, and, and pick up mice uh, here and there but the problem is is that some people are allergic to cats and they don't want cats around so I kindly say hey if the cat's a problem we we will We'll take the cat in the house which we will uh, for the night uh, just to keep them out of their hair some people love our cats they just can't get enough of them so those are my tips but like I said at the beginning of the video you leave a lot of money on the table if you do not allow pets on your glamping operation I would say honestly good 80 90 percent of pet owners are fine every once in a while i get a dog that kind of runs a little wild but you know what i get i get that with kids too i would say even 95 percent of the pet owners that come to the property i have no issues with and with that kind of of percentage figure uh, success figure uh it's very very worth it to add pets as an option for people staying on your property. So I hope that helps you. I'm Chris Jube, the glamping guy, helping others develop safe, legal, and profitable glamping operations on their private property. Click like and subscribe, of course, and we'll see you next time.